friends so today we will go for the further uh, class that is 10th class so today we will learn the important concepts uh, uh, important term that is magneto plumbides okay here it will come uh, here we will complete the magnetic properties of this uh, chapter of the unit 4 okay so what is this magneto plumbide magneto itself says that iron so this is nothing but the minerals again obtained in the rocks okay in uh, uh, um, as a mineral and the main composition of this magneto plumbite is this lead magneto and plum plumbite means lead so yeah. feo 19 so this is okay which iron is in plus 3 state and the substitute if uh, this substituted lead by barium so it is called as barium iron oxide plumbite that is bam this is very much important okay so they act as a permanent magnets okay and the structure are close to that of beta alumina so already we have learnt of beta alumina so they are made up of uh, stacks of oxide like this and every fifth layer so three four and fifth layer you can see there is a gap so there is missing of oxide layer and this missing of oxide layer we can see that uh, uh, the uh, oxide that is the aluminium cation and sodium are been infusing to this uh, missing uh, layer so, so here also same thing magnetoplumbine so fifth layer sub -re uh, repetition units will be there and fifth layer contains large pb and barium plus two so this is what okay so this is how the conduction uh, uh, as well as the magnetic property is shown by this and the structure uh, of this magnetoplumbite is very very complex and where they can be used so the, uh, these magnetoplumbites are used because of that magnetic property a uh, very magnetic nature so they are used in transformer cores okay then information storage device so this uh, uh, magnetoplumbites is used then memory component of binary uh, digital computers so this is how in mainly in the electronic uh, industry this magnetoplumbites is used only because of the magnetic property okay along with your garnets and all so garnets also is used in most of the uh, electronic devices and they are usually gray black uh, in color and uh, usually found in sweden not in india it is very less in sweden you can see this in the rocks so this is uh, generated and uh, uh, this is so here. I mean, I think uh, the uh, I saw, I told you that it's a ferromagnetic property uh, based on uh, the, the what is the mechanism? It's based on the super strength me mechanism. Okay, so mag ferromagnetic. So it is based on the super magnet uh, super exchange mechanism as we have learned in the previous class. Okay, regarding the nickel oxide when we studied this one, the super exchange we learned the same mechanism is been seen in this uh, magnetoplumbite uh, where uh, the Fe O F E bond will be. Uh, transition will be the, uh, there okay, you can see mechanism of uh, this one and uh, uh, iron where iron is in plus three state okay and the electronic arrangement in this crystal attached will be quietly uh, opposite like this arranged so as we have seen in the this one and this will uh, result in which type of this one ferromagnetic properties of this and uh, because of such uh, this uh, property it is used in most of the uh, electronic devices okay so this is how the short notes on the magneto plumbites so this is not so much important very rare we can see uh, regarding this the next uh, the final concept of this unit 4 so after this only one is left that is electrical properties okay so that is what optical properties so this we will go for uh, this we will have uh, we will learn so what is this luminescence luminescence is nothing but the emission of light by the material okay so this you, you keep it in mind uh, so emission of the light by the material when they absorb the energy okay so even if you take the moon so it will absorb the light of the sun and it emits uh, that so this also called as a luminescent and it's a luminescent body is it then uh, so how they are been uh, absorb the light so if they absorb the light you know, from uv uh, excite uh, excitation by the uv then it is called photoluminescence and if they absorb the light by electrical then electroluminescence we call it as a electroluminescence electrical energy and this photoluminescence is classified in two types that is uh, if the excitation and emission so this is excitation and this is emission okay excitation and emission if it is short 10 to the power of minus 8 lapse of time very short fast excitation and emission takes place then we call it as fluorescence and if there is a large excitation excitation and emission so uh, large time more than 10 to the power minus 8 so we call it as a phosphorescence okay this is what hmm? and even if the source is removed uh, it goes on fluorescing the light so emitting the light even if uh, the source is removed so, so that is a phosphorescence so <clears throat> for this uh, what is required photoluminescence so there is host uh, crystal structure it requires uh, the host crystal structure that is zinc sulfide 
calcium tungstate zinc silicate so these are used as a host material like this okay so phosphorus uh, photoluminescence this is very much required here and a dope activator any activator and a chemical uh, like uh, like this cations manganese barium lead europium like this okay sensita and the sensitizers which is nothing but activator only so somewhat having the same energy this can also be used in this host so in the first case you can see here activator is there excitation so when we excite the activator it will go in the higher state and emit this one so this is what the one case okay where the host uh, this is a host uh, h means host okay this is the host material and this is activator when i excite the activator it goes up and when it comes down it emits the emission so this is one how the luminescence photoluminescence act and the second case i have taken sensitizer also so yes and a so why it is placed uh, 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 beside it because of the same energy okay so even the activator can act as a sensitizer like this so when i excite sensitizer it will pass the energy to activator then it emits and emission so your energy transfer is going to take place this is a second mechanism okay you can see from sensitizer energy is transferred to activator then emission takes place okay? second mechanism so one is direct activation and second one is from sensitizer to uh, activator then emission takes place okay and here what you have to see that uh, the energy for uh, the energy of excited light is less here okay uh, then the emitted light so the energy which we got from the excitation is less than the emitted light so that means the wavelength will be more here so emission wavelength energy is of the emission will be less than excitation that means emission wavelength is more longer wavelength and that this increase in the wavelength of the emission is called stoke shift this is called as a stoke shift so, so whatever the <coughs> lower wavelength will be increased in, during emission it goes to higher wavelength and that increase in the wavelength we call it as a stoke shift okay and one best example of this is a fluorescent lamp like this so this will be asked for five marks okay. so you have to draw this fluorescent lamp and here mercury or uh, argon gas is there and electron is passed here electron it will hit to mercury and mercury when it uh, uh, go to excited state it emits the energy of around uh, 25 22540m strong or 1850m strong okay 1850m <coughs> strong so which comes in the uv radiation this uv radiation is very hazardous so this will be absorbed by the floral phosphor coating so this is coated in the bulb tube you have you have seen the tube no so it's coated in phosphor coating uh, maybe zinc sulfide or something like that so what happens uh, this will absorb this uv radiations from inside this tube and uh, while it comes up it will give white light normal radiations which is less hazardous so this is not less hazardous <coughs> so this is how the and <coughs> this is made up in the glass envelope glass envelope like this so just a tube what we are using in the uh, in the home like fluorescent tube so this is how <coughs> the fluorescent tube works uh, based on this uh, mechanism of the phosphorescence and luminescence so, so this they will ask you have to write uh, in uh, this way first to design this right uh, diagrammatically and then we explain this how it works okay so excitation emission then absorption by the fluorescent uh, this one and then transmission of the uv radiations to normal white light radiations okay so less uh, energy so this is how uh, it works so this is how today we completed the two terms of this magnetoplumbite and we have started with the new concept with optical properties. In the next class we will go for the next concept of the optical properties. So last one small part is remained in unit 4. So that we will complete another 3, 4, I think 3 classes. Then we will complete the unit 4 whole 100% uh, chapter uh, unit 4 will be completed. Thank you.